So far, all our syncopations have been made by shifting an accent or emphasis from one beat to another. But there's another species of syncopation which goes one step further. It takes a whole rhythm pattern with all its associated accents and superimposes it upon another. It's a technique called cross rhythm, and it's as old as the hills, or at least it is in Africa, where musicians have been doing it pretty much forever. Cross rhythm is the bit where drummers show off. It can seem unfeasibly difficult, like completing a jumbo Sudoku challenge while simultaneously ice skating, but the rewards can be thrilling. Cross rhythm is music's party trick, and we're going to find out how to do it. We begin with a relatively straightforward cross rhythm, one that even a classically trained musician like me would be able to manage. It involves the superimposition of a three beat pattern over a two beat pattern in the same amount of time. So we start with our basic two beat pattern. Then we'll make three beats fit on top of them. Just for fun, I'm going to get Owen and Oliver to swap beats mid flow. You can see why our ancestors really like this cross rhythm, can't you? It's dead flashy and it makes the rhythm really motor along. But you don't have to thwack it out on a pair of drums to feel the effect of this three against two pattern. Here it is in a piece by Brahms. But superimposing three over two is child's play for an African drummer. For a start, it only involves two players. Expertly orchestrated good African drum patterns can involve half a dozen or more separate drum patterns on top of each other, involving a dozen or more players, and the results can be breathtakingly exciting. Overlaying of one rhythm pattern over another has been given a fresh slant in recent years with the development of one of the most widespread and influential of modern techniques, rap. In rap, a percussion section, usually electronic, lays down a basic ground pattern over which the spoken voice enters with its own often very complicated pattern whose rhythmic shape is determined solely by the choice of words. Roaches in the back, junkies in the alley with the baseball bat. I tried to get away, but I couldn't get far because a man with the touch of repossessed my car. Don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> it's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. Standing on the front stoop, hanging out the window, watching all the cars go by, roaring as the breezes blow. A crazy lady living in a bag, eating out of garbage pails, used to be a fag hag. Such a dash tango, skip the life and tango. Was her gone prince to seem to lost her senses? To all intents and purposes, the voice in rap is behaving like a percussion instrument. This can be demonstrated by taking a hip-hop vocal line and turning it into pure rhythm pattern. Hope 
is a hybrid song with a rapping verse from Twister and a gospel-inspired chorus from singer Faith Evans. When Twister begins his verse, the real rhythmic action and vitality is provided not by the drum kit playing the ground beat, but by the percussive energy of his voice. I wish I could teach the world to sing, write some music and have them tripping off the joy I bring. I wish that we can hold hands, listen instead of dissing lessons from a grown man. And I wish the families that lack, but got love, get some stacks, brand new shot, get a lack, that's on dubs and I. We can break this rhythm down to its essentials. Owen here will play as the rhythmic pattern of the ground beat. While Oliver will play the pattern Twister is rapping. It's immediately obvious that the voices pattern is much more complicated than the backing track. Written down in standard Western notation, these kinds of cross rhythms are fiendishly hard to read at speed, which is one reason why you didn't tend to hear much of it in classical music. Classical composers did finally start to play around with layered rhythms in the 20th century. They went slightly bananas, a bit like someone discovering sex for the first time, aged 60. The Russian composer Igor Stravinsky composed a ballet score in 1912, The Rite of Spring, about a prehistoric tribe sacrificing a virgin, in which he experimented with elaborate polyrhythms, that's multiple simultaneous beat patterns, much to the horror and alarm of his fellow European music lovers at the time. It's an absolute masterpiece, by the way. Our rhythmic toolbox is now just about full. We have our pulse, our tempo, our accents, our syncopations and our cross rhythms. Now we owe it to ourselves to have a bit of fun with these tools. We need to go somewhere hot, steamy and musical where all these different rhythmic techniques have been mixed together in a magnificent melting pot of African, European and Latin styles to the 20th century's rhythmic hub, Cuba. At the very beginning of the 20th century, when ragtime and the blues were giving birth to jazz on mainland America, another form was becoming popular on the Caribbean island of Cuba. This form was called song, and from it has blossomed the most extraordinary range of dance and song types. Danson, rumba, guacanco, yambu, bossa nova, mambo, conga, cha-cha-cha, and eventually salsa. These forms were to have enormous influence, first in the Americas, and then later through countless popular genres the whole world. What was it about Cuban rhythm then that was so seductive? Mm -hmm. 